Welcome, everybody. It's my pleasure to participate and uh, be with you today. I think one of the most difficult things about a sarcoma diagnosis is that you are somewhat unique. And so I thought I would start by talking about what is a sarcoma. And sarcomas are different from carcinomas, which you hear about breast cancers, lung cancer, you certainly can have sarcomas that arise from those places as well, but what is different about them? Why do we distinguish them? And it really has to do with the cells that they begin with. They begin with mesenchymal cells, and if any of you studied biology or embryology, there are three basic cell types that make up a living organism, and one of them is, are the mesenchymal cells. And this diagram shows that based on different genes, and those are those little names, SOX5, SOX2, that are noted in the diagram, if they are turned on during development or during as we grow, that they will develop into certain types of cells, chondroblasts or osteoblasts. And these are cells that will ultimately develop into our connective tissue, which are bone, cartilage, muscle, also things like fat, nerves, and these are the cells that ultimately, when they become cancerous or malignant, turn into sarcomas. So sarcomas can really be anywhere in the body and represent multiple types of tissues, such as bone, fat, nerve, blood vessels, um, and so different from a carcinoma. Where do these tumors occur? Well, they really can occur anywhere in the body. When we look statistically, the most common sites of sarcomas are really in the extremity, particularly the lower extremity, followed by the abdomen, and then the trunk, and you can see further going down the line. But really, you can have a sarcoma anywhere, and so that is one of the challenges in taking care of patients with sarcomas is knowing where things can present and also that they can present anywhere. Soft tissue sarcomas are rare tumors, and many medical oncologists who you see may have seen one or two cases in their lifetime. Last year, there were about 13,000 cases diagnosed in the United States. If you contrast that to, say, something like lung cancer or breast cancer, where the numbers of cases run into the hundreds of thousands, you can see what a distinct group of patients you are or your loved ones are who have this disease. And so one of the biggest challenges, as I mentioned, is that most doctors who encounter a sarcoma, unless they're at a specialty center, really don't have experience or even have seen a patient with this. And so your primary care physician, if you come with a lump, may say the most common thing they see is a lipoma, and so they think it's a lipoma. A medical oncologist, again, most of them who don't specialize will see very few cases in their lifetime. Pathologists, sarcomas are one of the most complex types of tumors to diagnose partially because there are so many different types, and so even for pathologists, it can be a challenge. And then for radiologists, because they are so uncommon, most radiologists don't have the experience of even looking at films of these tumors or radiographs. When you think about a patient and whether or not they may or may not have a sarcoma, what should you be looking for? Well, certainly, Somebody who has a lump or swelling, that might be something that is a sarcoma. But not every lump or swelling is a sarcoma, and what are the things that make you concerned that it might be? Certainly something that grows over time, particularly if it grows rapidly, if there's pain associated with it. Some sarcomas arise in the abdomen. So is there swelling in the abdomen? Somebody having issues with eating normally? Sometimes. Patients can present with anemia or abnormal bleeding, particularly if there are sarcomas within the abdomen or involving the uterus. But some patients will not have any symptoms at all and may ultimately be found because of um, having a test for something else. 
I picked a couple of x-ray scans to take, uh, show you what these things can look at. And these are all patients that I actually saw last week. The one on the upper left is a patient who has a leiomyosarcoma, and this traveled to her rib. Um, and you can see that where that arrow is pointing to, this large mass that's involving the bone. In the center of that x-ray is the top of the heart, and the things around it next to the heart and sort of black with the white streaks are what the normal lungs look like. But you can see if you compare the, where the arrow is compared to the other side, um, the two sides don't look alike, and so that's where this tumor is. If you look at the top right, this is a sarcoma that's in the abdominal cavity or retroperitoneal sarcoma, and there's the arrow pointing to the mass which is right above the kidney on the right. You can see the kidney on the left as well. And to the side is the liver. It's actually the left-hand side of the image, um, but it, that happens to be the right-hand side of the body. Um, and then lastly, down on the bottom, is a mass in the leg. If you look at the left-hand side of the image where it says R, you see you know, two white streaks with a middle streak, and those are uh, darker streaks, and those are the muscles surrounded by the soft tissue or fatty tissue of the leg. And then if you go to the side where the arrow is pointing at, you see that compared to the other side, now there's almost like a wedge-like area, which is the tumor. So these are how these tumors can look like on scan. So how do we diagnose these? Usually a patient will have a biopsy. There are different ways of doing biopsies. The preferred way is to do an image-guided biopsy. So using one of those scans we just looked at, and the radiologist can then direct the needle specifically into the tumor to get tissue. Sometimes if the tumor is inside the body, we speak with our pulmonary or lung doctor colleagues or our gastroenterology colleagues to see if they can, with their doing procedures such as bronchoscopy, or endoscopy or colonoscopy if they can help us get a biopsy. And the last but not least is doing a surgical procedure or what we call an open biopsy. With an open biopsy, you can get more tissue, but facilities that are used to taking care of patients and, and evaluating biopsies can look at these smaller biopsies, particularly core biopsies, and provide an accurate and diagnosis. One of the issues with an open biopsy, particularly when it's on an extremity, is that how the biopsy is done can affect what happens down the road with further surgery. And so one of the teaching points that we always um, try and let the surgery residents and surgery, surgical oncology fellows know, the trainees who are going to be seeing patients in the future, is that you want to orient um, the biopsy in a specific way because down the road, if you're doing surgery to remove the tumor, you're going to want to remove all the skin around that biopsy, include that incision line. So particularly if it's done in a horizontal direction, you may end up requiring a larger operation. And so that is a very important feature that we think about in terms of doing a biopsy. Once you have the material to look at, your pathologist can take a look at it. And pathologists work with things that are called special stains. They're staining the tumor for certain types of receptors or growth receptors on tumor cells or certain types of proteins or that are characteristic of specific types of tumors. And that's true for every tumor, whether it be breast cancer, colon cancer, or sarcoma. Certainly sarcomas have different types of proteins that are seen that are not necessarily common in other tumors. And we also tend to use molecular testing much more for the diagnosis of these tumors. What is molecular testing? That is looking at the DNA primarily of a tumor and looking for specific genes that may be altered. They can be altered because a gene, which is made up of DNA, which are really sort of the reading code of how this gene will produce a protein, you remember your basic biology, that 
can be altered, and when that code is altered, it changes the, what that gene is made into, and when it's altered, it can change the function and make something more active or less active, which can um, be associated with development of cancer. Also, in sarcomas, we sometimes see things that are called translocations, where part of one gene will become mixed, uh, attached to another gene, often from different chromosomes. And those tests that are done are very specialized for sarcoma. And so specialty pathologists are very important for the diagnosis of sarcoma. 